What is up guys, Chris here with another Eden Zero Manga Chapter Review and things just keep getting more and more intense. This arc is basically in its very climax. We just got the end of the battle between Shura and Shiki and Nero and Ziggy. Both incredibly fast paced and very powerful uh, moves were exchanged and a really epic battle and I'm honestly very pleased with how these how these, these fights have concluded and the, the last chapter ended off with the biggest cliffhanger with Ziggy activating all 20,000 of those antimatter bombs that are stored underneath the planet that Nero moved there because he knew what Shuro was planning the entire time so yeah I am um, I'm very pleased with how things are turning out and that's kind of how the chapter ends this week we get right into it and I'm gonna get into that in one sec. Before we get into the actual review, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for updates for future videos, it really helps. My Eden Zero reviews are doing a lot better as of late, and I know they're coming out a, a few days later than normal, but I wanna make sure that these reviews are as good as possible and look as nice as so for you guys to watch. If you wanna help out the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for updates on future videos. It helps with the algorithm and you'll get updated whenever I upload. And I also have a coffee and Patreon account, so if you want to help support the channel even more, go to those. The links will be in the description down below, and it'll help me get videos out a lot sooner, and it'll help me more, more or less fully commit to doing YouTube even more and maybe make more videos a week. Now with that out of the way, let's get into this week's chapter. Chapter 165, Fork in the Road. And we start this chapter off with Haumea this time. Instead of doing a recap, she basically talks about a fork in the road. And I like that this is like a literal cover pa uh, colored, uh, pa uh, a colored page with her just going through her, the void that she has in her room and seeing a, a break in the road with two separate paths and that those times and that we're entering times to choose only one and that they'll never know what lies beyond the path that was never chosen. But that path too also leads to its own world and perhaps there exists a you who is completely unlike the you you are now. Basically stating that when you're stuck between a, hard, a rock and a hard place, there, there are two options left. Whatever option you pick, will fully, fully change the outcome of everything that's going to happen afterwards and even fully affect you as a person. We then get a nice color color spread of the entire Eden Zero crew. And once again, I like it. Mashima really has a lot of fun designing his characters and the colors are really great. I wish I could talk more about it, but there's not too much. It's really just showcasing all of the members of the Eden Zero crew smiling and having fun, essentially. Showing off their personalities. But anyway, we, we go back to the chapter exactly where it left off with Ziggy activating all the bombs. And we feel, we see the rumbling happening in the planet as all those bombs are being set off. With Ziggy basically turning off his transmission with Sh and Shiki wondering what's going to happen with the bombs. Pino once again realizes the situation to everybody and that they're on this planet. And they only have 20 minutes until the detonation process. Happy says that they have to hurry and get out of here. But Shiki says... We can't basically just ask, can't they stop it? Pino states that it's impossible. The terminal is down, and Z Ziggy used the independent all link system network to activate them. So it's not using what uh, essentially it was for all the droids during the, uh, the high tide, but he basically just used it to try and destroy the planet. Shiki asks what's going to happen to the planet, and Pino just says that it'll most likely be destroyed. Shiki states that there are a whole lot of people still left on the planet. But Rebecca states that she knows how Shiki feels, but there's nothing that they can do. Shiki goes off to try and stop it, but Rebecca says that they have to get out of there if they want to live. And I like how we're getting this little visual, visual representation for Shiki. He's got two paths. Stay and try and stop the bombs, or get his friends and get out of there. And I like how Hamea literally just shows up, seemingly, like, talking into Shiki's ear, stating that he's at a fork on the road. One path leads to escape and survival, and the other path, rash action, basically the path of rash action, that leads to death. Chiki has to choose this for himself, and, and tells him, which path will you take? And it seems like Shiki is snapping out of it, and I like how it's possible that Chao Haumea can at some points come in and influence people's perspective state. Not just telling them what to do, but stating you got a choice. There are two different ways this could play out. 
and Shiki's not entirely sure which of these paths she's referring to, whether it be staying to stop the bombs or going with or going to get everyone out of there. Shiki hesitates for a second, thinks it over, and states to get out of there. And just like that, the Aqua the Aqua Wing, Rebecca's original ship, bursts through the walls with Homura, Clean, Jin, and Wise all together in the ship, stating that they that they're wondering what's going on with Eden Zero. And that they and that the, and that uh, a large number of explosives were detected, and all the people are panicking. State uh, Y states that whatever is going on, we'll figure it out back at the Eden Zero, and tells them to get on. She says the wait, saying that Shura most likely is going to try and get Shura out of there too, but Shura is nowhere to be found. He's gone. This could also lead into the fact with how the princess ends up is not in Laguna's care anymore. Perhaps she saved uh, Shura, or maybe uh, Shura, or maybe Shura is going to be killed by her in a different spot. We don't know. But anyway, we get this computer stating to everyone on the planet to get, to evacuate, and I, and I like that. Everyone's starting to get off the planet, and the remnants of the oceans, the four of them that managed to escape, the four that were beaten by our main cast, are stating that it's a good thing that Th that um, uh, the guy with the Eye of Horus, or whatever his ether gear is called, had a ship repaired. Milani is wondering why they're not ju they're just ju just going to leave Shura behind. With uh, Lyra just stating that she Shura was fun for to hang out with, but she just can't deal with him anymore. Cal Callum also states that he gave his soldiers orders to evacuate, and he hopes for all of them to get out safely. We then cut to the battle up in space. With everyone dealing with that sea serpent uh, ship that's eradicating a ton of the rebel, rebel and army, uh, and, and interstellar union forces, but then a ship comes coming, starts coming in. It's Dylan, the lover of the girl that ended up dying from that thing's initial attack, goes in with anger and despair, stating, "How dare you take her from me?" And that he's he wants if you he, he won't let them beat them, you evil oppressive empire. Or corpses will pave the way to freedom. Everyone's trying to talk him to, not to get out of it. He's just charging right in to that one blast. With Eraser also shocked by this, he goes in basically kamikazing that uh, th the sea serpent, causing it to miss fire, and everyone's shooting out in pain. The the sea serpent it has stopped moving. Justice gives Eraser the command to attack now. With Eraser literally being physically upset by this because he probably didn't want anyone else to die or throw their lives away he then basically erases that thing from existence and destroys it and i like how there is literally a captain in there basically cursing the union army and the rebels and that they're dealing with the narrow empire but then all of a sudden everybody gets a message from the eden zero who just got off the planet saying stating that uh essentially uh telling everyone to withdraw immediately. Shura has been defeated, his plan to use the all link to destroy all androids in the Aoi Cosmos has been stopped, and at the temple, Nero has also been defeated as well, and the Empire is beginning to fall. Much to the Empire soldiers' like shock, shock and disbelief, even Goodwin is like, are we are we really winning? And the rebels are literally saying, is, is it true we won? And Hermit states that the war is over. There is no longer any need to fight. But she then tells everyone why they need to all evacuate because there are 20,000 antimatter bombs set to go off on Narrow 66 and it'll detonate in only a few minutes. Much to everyone's shock. She states the obvious. One of these could destroy a planet, but with all those uh, bundled together, it'll most likely take out a bunch of neighboring planets as well. Once again, repeating that there is no need to no reason to to fight anymore and to leave this area and live the empire soldiers are asking the commander what to do saying that the skies are filled with the reactuees from uh, from narrow 66 this captain is saying is she saying we've lost everyone's requesting the guy to withdraw but then all of a sudden he picks back up and says we fight for the empire we will stay here until our last, and then gets knocked out by one of the shoulder, uh, soldiers saying, it's over, we lost. So it's obvious there are a ton of these commanders in the in in this empire who most likely have very high positions and refuse to lose at all. 
So Eraser ends up giving the command for everybody to retreat and makes survival their top priority. Also from the Empire as well. But then Justice comes on saying, do you actually believe these people? And even Eraser states that I seriously doubt that they're lying about this. Justice states that Creed and Jess are still on, on Narrow 66 and is asking if they would abandon them. But then, uh, but then, uh, Jess comes in stating that he's no longer on the planet. And I like that one of his crewmates they asks, where's Creed? And he hesitates to answer, stating, let's go, Justice. Goodwin tells the Rebel Army to skedaddle, and everyone begins to flee the area. Sister says it all works out, and I like how it's literally like, why do you have to make the, the extreme introvert give this giant speech? And I like how despite everything that's happened, we're still getting a bit of a comedic tone to this. Countable says, do you think the people of, of, six, of 66 managed to make it out? Maskoi says, most likely. Laguna is wondering what's going on with the princess. And Jin states the obvious, we'll have to worry about others once they've gone into safety. But then Hermit gets, some, gets something on her radar. We then go to the medical room where Shiki and Rebecca are pleased to see that which is all good, fully repaired, and back to full health. And I like how despite her being out of commission for a while, she states that all the Shining Stars are linked via, have like a data link, so they're, they're in constant communication if, if they're not being blocked, so she knows the, the whole situation. She then looks at Shiki very proudly, stating that he's grown very strong, strong enough that they might not even need her anymore. Yeah, this is a big old red flag. This is definitely going to show that, sometime, that this is gonna, something's going to happen to Witch. Like, almost any character that says this in any form of fiction or writing, they end up dead or removed from the story. But anyway, I like how Shiki's literally wondering what she means by this, and even Witch isn't even entirely sure. She is feeling joy and sadness, and she can't exactly understand it with her programming. And Rebecca literally just says that she's basically like the like the mother of the Eden Zero. She's basically looking at Shiki, showing that she has joy, joy seeing her child grow up, and sad that they'll eventually leave the nest. And she, and, and which is like, I wouldn't presume this. And, li and literally Shiki's like, wait, does that mean I'm like her kid? And I like how Happy just states that which is basically like the mother to everyone on the Eden Zero, and she has basically been this maternal figure to everybody on the crew. So I like that this is being fully addressed and confirmed because I'm pretty sure everybody had the, had these thoughts as we were reading through this series. And which literally states that she can accept that, but then we get a bunch of like, a, like concerning alarms, and which is wondering what's going on. As Herman states that the ship propulsion systems aren't budging, and that the Eden Zero has more or less stopped working. They need to get out of there as fast as possible. But then a monitor starts to come up saying Shiki's name. It's Ziggy, and my god, is this panel freaking intimidating and scary and freaky as hell. With, with literally one side of Ziggy's face broken off, it's almost like an actual skeleton, um, uh, an actual, like, living corpse, like a burnt face is underneath his mask or something. And he says that, t t says that Shiki made the wrong choice, much to everyone's shock. Ziggy states that all, and I, and I like that everyone's saying that all the, all the Birth Eden Zero's functions are completely frozen. And Ziggy's got control of everything. And there's only one minute left until the planet detonates. Wise wants to know if they can use fast travel to get out of there, but everything is frozen in place. They can't do anything. Clean comes up with the idea to use the starships to get out of there, but all the ship's doors have been closed and locked. Everyone is starting to feel this despair, wondering if it's actually over. Ziggy states that this wouldn't have happened if he had tried to stop the explosion, you wouldn't have ended up destroying everything. Now, what does he mean by this? I have no clue. Does Ziggy have some kind of whole map planned out for, for Shiki to do things? Maybe he wants Shiki to become the ultimate evil so that he can slay him, or maybe he just wants to kill Shiki as quickly as possible. Maybe the wrong choice was Shiki leaving and not trying to stop the bombs, as... Ziggy would would figure out that Ziggy that Shiki most likely would not be able to do it, but with Shiki shaking in fear and anger, which comes up saying that she that nothing will go according to his plans, not as long as the Shield of Edens is there, and that's how the chapter ends.
really good chapter. I liked that everyone's getting out of there. I like that Shiki basically had to come to two choices. And once again, it's very likely that Rebecca will not will not use Cat Leaper again. I doubt Mashima's gonna go that route. He even stated that they wanted this story in an interview. They wanted the story to be a bit darker. Not too dark, but darker than what you know normally, right? And a bit more intense. So it's very likely that if any character is going to end up dying in this arc or in the series first, it's going to be Wish, the first shining star that we've met, who has been basically confirmed to be like the mother figure of the entire crew. And as just stated in this video, multiple red flags have been... <sighs> multiple red flags and death flags have been stated in this whole freaking chapter. So... If she doesn't die, die, I'll be happy, but also concerned at how he's going to end up killing off a main character at some point. But yeah, this chapter just been insane. Ziki being intimidating as all hell. Basically saying that Shiki made the wrong choice in trying to just get his friends out of there and get everybody in the cosmos to leave instead of trying to stop all the bombs. I don't know how, what, what Ziggy knows about like the core of the universe, about Mother or everything that's been elaborated to in, in earlier chapters. But maybe Shiki's choice would determine a lot of stuff. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that's all I'm really going to say about this chapter. There's not too much to say. Only other thing is that there's a big old red flag and death flag about which is death going on right now. So, yeah, that's kind of a thing. What do you guys think about this chapter? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What do you think is going to happen next? I think... Which is most likely going to die, saving them from being essentially eradicated by that bomb, most likely using all of her energy as an actual shield, as her as per her job as the Shield of Edens. Or, for all we know, like I've been saying since this arc began, especially since the midway point, Elsie is nowhere to be found. So, maybe she'll come in and make a last minute save once more, or... Maybe in that last one minute, Elsie will show up on six um, on Narrow Planet Six, avert Ziggy's attention, giving the crew enough time to just barely make it out of that explosion. That's my theory, anyway. Or, or like I said, which will end up using all of her powers to keep the Eden Zero from being destroyed by those antimatter bombs. But right now, it's all speculation as to what can happen next. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And with all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.